Jack Crawford was born in New South Wales, Australia in 1908. Being a member of, of a large family, we had um, the good sense to build a tennis court. I can well remember acting for a number of years as a ball boy. And then one afternoon, I was suddenly given the privilege of, act <coughs> of actually playing. And that was the biggest thrill. Crawford began playing the tennis circuit in the late 1920s and married Australian singles finalist Marjorie Cox in 1930. In 1931, he won his first Grand Slam singles title, beating Harry Hopman in the final of the Australian Championships. He retained the title the following year against Hopman. In 1933, Crawford faced Keith Gledhill in the Australian final. In Melbourne, the match was played, and um, it rained all morning, but they had the court covered, but... Nevertheless, some seepage came underneath the cover and the court was very slippery and we were both allowed to wear spiked shoes. You know. And Keith got away to a good start and uh, he beat me 6-2 without very much trouble. The game changed suddenly and I took control and I ran out uh, uh, with three sets to one advantage. At the French Championships, Crawford beat Jiri Sato in the semis and faced Henry Cachet in the final. Uh, after playing Sardo, my, I found two strings broken in the, the favourite racket that I used, so I had to rush it up to Crochet's sports store and um, get him to string it, to restring it. So came back and it was the most perfect restring that I've ever played with. And, um, I don't remember ever being in any difficulties. I won the match three straight sets. The Wimbledon final went to a fifth set. Uh, we were four all and I was serving and we were 30 points all. So I took the chance as I had been doing and I served him wide in the forehand and he hit one down the sideline that I had no hope in the world uh, of getting. And uh, I couldn't make up my mind whether it was right or wrong so I looked round quickly to see what the umpire had decided. And I, to my relief, I saw him waving his hand to indicate that the ball was out. And um, I thought it was out, but there's no point in me thinking it was out. It was the umpire that had the decision to make. So that was the, uh, about the winning point. It enabled me to hold my serve, go to 5-4, and then Elderworth served, and to my surprise, I had no thunderbolts to contend with. He, uh, fortunately for me, he missed his first big serve, and the second one was always possible to play it. But I was lucky in, in, a, in, in this one respect that I brought up more chalk in, <clears throat> in that particular game than I had in the whole match. I hit, I hit the line no less than four times with a passing shot off the backhand in the, in the first point and the same in the second quarter and then a forehand pass to bring up love 40. And the last point I... He missed his serve again, and I hit one to the backhand corner, which brought up the white. And in doing so, the, the ball doesn't come off the surface in the same way that it does when it hits the grass. And it, it caused him to mistime the ball, which eventually hit the net, and that was the end of the... Um At the US Championships, Crawford led two sets to one against Fred Perry in the final, one set away from the first ever Grand Slam. At the end of the third set, before the interval, I had the misfortune to break some strings in the racket that I had won 12 uh, championships with, singles championships. And um, it was just like, as though I had two other rackets there and they, they were perfectly good, but they weren't exactly the same because they felt different to me and they were strung and they'd been, I'd been carrying them around for months and I suppose the hot sun and taking life out of them. And he raced through the last two sets and I was unable to offer much resistance at all. He beat me. Crawford won his last Grand Slam title at the Australian in 1935, beating Fred Perry in the final. He played until the early 1950s and died in 1991, aged 83. There was an Australian who everybody seems to forget, Jack Crawford. I always sort of remember him as, as a sort of a transition between what the old game used to be 
uh, and, and the new game became. He sort of wandered around the court, had his sleeves down all the time, and like a garden party, more or less, in no particular hurry, but moved extremely quickly. Never seemed to be in a hurry, and never seemed to be flustered, but he had a great weight of shot, particularly on the forehand. Uh, and and uh, he had a, a pretty good all-round game, and he was around for a long time. So, so I think he is, 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 is one of the men who's done a great deal to, to sort of keep the game uh, on the upgrade all, all the way. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.